Welcome again. Right now in this session, we are at John chapter 5, verses 30, 31, excuse me, all the way down to verse 47. That's the end of the chapter. Now, this is various testimonies about Jesus. This is almost like a buffet of just little passages here and there. So let's get right into this. This is, these are the words of Jesus himself. Jesus is speaking here, verse 31. If I testify about myself, my witness is not valid. Now, this is very significant. Jesus said, like Jesus himself said, if I say it, if it's just me saying it, it's not valid. He's here to say what has already been said. He's here to preach what's already been preached. Okay. He, he said, uh, you know, in other part of scripture, he said very clearly, I didn't come to abolish anything. I didn't come to change anything. He just come to expound upon what's already there. Okay, to bring more clarity to it, actually to drive it even deeper into yourself, to challenge you even, you know, to, to apply God's law on even deeper levels in your life. He did not come to start his own little thing. He didn't come to start his own little religion. If, if he came to start his own little religion, to start his own little following, to start his own little, you know, Christianity, as a lot of people believe he did, then saying this is... Why would he say, hey, listen, if I testify about myself, it's not valid. I, you know, I'm not here speaking of myself. In other words, he's not here doing his own thing. He's doing, he's doing another person's thing. Okay? Think about that. You know, he's not the, the end of the line, so to speak. He's just here. He's saying, I'm not here testifying about myself. If I, if, if I was, if I, if I was here just saying, well, Jesus said, if I say it, that's it. No, he said, no, I'm not saying anything of myself. I'm saying, what I'm saying is what has already been, okay? There's nothing new under the sun, okay? So if I testify about myself, my witness is not valid. Verse 32, it is another who testifies about me. I know that the testimony which he testifies about me is true. You have sent to John and he has testified to the truth. But the testimony which I receive is not from man. However, I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. Verse 36, But the testimony which I have is greater than that of John, for the works which the Father gave me to accomplish, the very works that I do testify about me, that the Father has sent me. The Father himself who sent me has testified about me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. You don't have his word living in you because you don't believe him whom he sent. You search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. And these are they which testify about me. Now, this is awesome. And I, I know a lot of you, you know about this, this particular verse. You know, Jesus said, you search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. But these are they which testify about me. What were the scriptures he was talking about? They didn't have the New Testament back then. What were the scriptures that testified about Jesus? It is, you know, it was what we would call the Old Testament plus you know, other books as well. I mean, you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls, how many other books that there was. You look at the Septuagint back in those days. The Septuagint was, was very, very widely accepted and not condemned by Jesus at all. It was accepted, you know, by omission. Jesus didn't say anything against the Septuagint. So um, you look at all the books that was written and all the you know all of the all of the scriptures all of the all of the scrolls that were written uh in in jesus day and so jesus was saying they all testify about him okay we know from the dead sea scrolls there was the book of enoch there was the book of jubilees we know from the septuagint there was a lot of the apocrypha even more than what the roman catholic and orthodox church has you know we have in the septuagint books that most churches don't even accept as part of the canon. Yet back then they did. Okay? It was in the Septuagint. 
But Jesus said, these are the scriptures that testify about me. Now, there is an extreme to this this whole view of, you know, you search the scriptures, but, you know, you think that in them you have eternal life, but they speak of me, says Jesus. Well, you got these people that say, oh, you don't need to read the Bible at all. All you need to do is just, you know, just trust Jesus, just go by Jesus, just go by the Spirit. You don't need the Bible at all. Well, that is that is a very, very, very dangerous uh, place to be in because if you, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but it seems like everybody's got their own Jesus, you know, like this nationality to them, Jesus is that nationality. To that other nationality, to them, Jesus is that nationality. You know, to the to the pot smokers, to them, Jesus is a pot smoker. To the, you know, to the liberals, to them, Jesus is a liberal. To the conservatives, to them, Jesus is a, is a conservative. We need to have something now because we don't have Jesus face to face in the flesh like they did back, back then. Now we have to go back to the scriptures to see what Jesus really was like, okay? How do we do that? Not just New Testament scriptures, because Jesus said right here, the scriptures, which talks about, obviously, Old Testament scriptures, because there was no other scriptures in existence at that time. So those scriptures, the scriptures that were written before the birth of Jesus, are the scriptures that testified about him. So you want to know what Jesus was like? Read the scriptures that were written before the New Testament. That's what Jesus was like. Jesus is in all of it. Okay, If your New Testament Jesus doesn't match your Old Testament Jesus, you've got the wrong Jesus. Verse 40. Yet you will not come to me that you may have life. I don't receive glory from men. In other words, I don't receive any kind of praise or I don't receive any kind of, uh, I don't need your, you know, approval. Okay, I don't need your praise. I don't need your your thumbs up. I don't need your, your pro ratings. Okay, I don't need none of that. I don't receive glory from men. But I know you that you don't have God's love in yourselves. I have come in my Father's name and you don't receive me. That is very significant that he said that because there's a lot of people that come in the Father's name today and a lot of people who preach love, who say love is love, it's all about love, they don't receive these people that come in the, in the name of the Father. I'm telling you something, people who come in the name of the Father will preach against sin. And let me be a little bit more specific to a lot of you who are watching. The people who come in the name of the Father will preach against the sin that you so love. Okay? And, and the fact that you reject these people, the fact that you hate these people, is the, tr is, the, is the telltale sign that God's love, the real, true love of God, is not in you. You just have the love of, your, of the world. You just have the love of yourself in you. He said again, I have come in my Father's name and you don't receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. Okay, because men, you know, humans like to receive humans more than they like to receive God, the holy, righteous God. Hmm. Verse 44, how can you believe who receive glory from one another? And you don't seek the glory that comes from the only God. Don't think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is, there is one who accuses you, even Moses, on whom you have set your hope. Again, you need to realize he's talking to Jews here. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me. For he wrote about me. But if you don't believe his writings... How will you believe my words? Here is a word for my wonderful, wonderful Jewish friends. If you believed Moses, you would believe Yeshua. You would believe Jesus. You don't believe in Jesus because you don't really believe in Moshe either. You say, oh, well, yeah, I do, yeah, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm all pro-Torah. All we do every day is we read the, the you know, the, the, the words of, the, of Moshe and, and we talk about Moshe all the time. And uh, No, no, you don't. You miss a lot of things. You skip a lot of things. You know, Moshe said, don't hold a grudge. 
and you hold a grudge against the people who at least claim themselves to be Christians and did things that you didn't like. You hold a grudge against them. You break. You disbelieve Moses. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. That's just what, that's just the facts. So if you believe Moses, you believe Jesus. If you believe Jesus, you believe Moses. Moses and Jesus go hand in hand. The true Moses and the true Jesus. The, the problem is, the, the, for the most part, the Jewish Moses needs to be a little bit more like Jesus. I mean, the Jewish Moses is not the true Moses because the true Moses was a little bit more like Jesus. And the, and the Christian Jesus is not the true Jesus either for the most part, because that Jesus needs to be a little bit more like Moses, you know. Remember, Moses said, a prophet's coming like me. You know, obviously, most Christian scholars said that's, that's a prophecy about Jesus. When Moses prophesied, the, there is a prophet coming like me. And you, you should listen to him. Almost all Christians would tell you that's Moses talking about Jesus. But notice, like me. Moses said, like me. So, your Jesus should be like Moses. Your Moses should be like Jesus. Don't forget that. Thanks again, and may God bless you, give you great revelation, and, and bless you in all that you do. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen.